Welcome to Battle of the Brews. Deep thoughts fermented over time and text. I'm coming at you with my co-hosts, George. Hail Satan. Oh, Kobe. Hola. Keith. Feel nose good, Bobby Shaw. And Edward. I would drink it in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Edward, for someone to. I am Eric. <laughs> uh, with the fox. <laughs> with the fox. <laughs> and the mouse. Fox, fox. <laughs> and all that good stuff. We're diving into Prosperity Week from Market Garden. It is an ABV of 6% and an IBU of it doesn't say. So <laughs> let's try it out. All right. Cheers, my friends. Cheers. 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 All right. Cheers. I'm all the way over here. I found right the ABV. 6.6%. There you go. And right away, it's it's a little cloudy, mm-hmm. but it does have that uh, golden hue. Meatballs, <laughs> nice mm-hmm. golden hue. Mm. Yeah, you definitely taste that wheat. Oh, oh wow! Speaking mm. of golden hues, mm. yeah, it's it's. You know what I like about wheat beers? It's a little bit sweet. It does have a little sweetness to it. <laughs> yeah, and just mm. enough body. Yeah, you know, it's. It's definitely it's definitely heavier than say our Estelle Artois, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But it's uh, it's not as heavy as say an IPA or a stout. It's it's right in between. It's got that nice resonant tone to it, just enough body to let you know that it's it's not a pilsner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is that why? Is that why it <laughs> wants you to know it's not a pilsner? That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of a whole garden. You guys ever had that one? Oh yeah. oh yeah, that is it. That's yeah, I say so. Yeah, they, you yeah, know what? Actually. It's as far as the pilsners go. I actually like a Grolsch. Grolsch is a really good. Think of a a better tasting Heineken. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I like me a Heineken. Yeah, well, then you will love a Grolsch. See, the one time I had one, I had a. The, whenever someone says Grolsch, I just had like a bad Grolsch one time. Again, I was going on the indie brews hard for a while, so I think I tried too that many like alternative or like, it. you know, <laughs> them trying to like, you know, experiment with something. You know, you know when you experiment with something and you don't like it, hmm. right? Like, <laughs> like, the like marijuana. <laughs> 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 Well, I think we went over this that this clearly this group is against the marijuana. I'd say so. we are definitely a little green on that subject. <laughs> oh. I don't think the guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's the beeper. He's been keeping it hidden this whole time. I was wondering where it's at. I remembered to bring it out. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So, so whose article? Whose article is hopping right now? We though? are jumping into Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch Mackie with Max. Edward. Okay, so um, in true Edward fashion, Which, I did not, like confession time, I didn't do my homework for this. Good. Because I didn't think I'd be here. But at the last moment, I became available, and I'm here. So... Be blessed, my child. Be blessed. You. <laughs> be blessed. And um, let's just wing it. Aaron provided me with this article. It's a short little... I'm sorry. I'm, it's mo- it's I'm, more of a blip. I'm, I'm juice. Mm-hmm. Juice. Yeah, yeah. Excuse not Jews. me. He's a, a juice. Yeah. Yes, I know. I said right. He's a juice, though. Did I say juice? You, you said did. juice. You no, totally I did. Uh, just. I <laughs> we meant just juice. started and already we're into. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, Aaron provided me with this article. It's more of a little blip, if you will, because I don't think it was intended to become an article. Can we, we define let, blip? We let, well, so like. It's a couple paragraphs. Wait, is it just a video? And it's a video. <laughs> is it, it a video? Comes along. We're not so, going to play the video. And we're not going to play the video. No. But it's um, Mark Wahlberg put something up on his Instagram. And since we live in a world now where we make news articles out of Instagram posts and Twitter <laughs> posts. Bingo. Entire articles out of them and people discuss it. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. Um, so this is Gosh, called. I hate the Ash Wednesday thing when you guys put the Ash. In your here's forehead. what Mark Wahlberg <laughs> is because doing you don't for know Lent. It. No, because it doesn't matter. Like, it why does. does God of the free world want you to put ash on your forehead? It's because marketing. Mark, it's a reminder. It. It's a reminder. Marky Mark did it. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, we'll talk about Sorry, the Edward. symbolism a bit. Mark Let's hit the article first. Mark then Wahlberg. we'll hit the symbolism. Do you think good go vibrations ahead. drop into his boxers on MTV? Oh, I don't uh, care. All right, now, he go. confesses at that time he was actually Listen, not a good Catholic. Listen, let me just get into it and go. read the article. Is anyone a good Catholic in their 20s? 
It's from a source called Alatia, if I'm pronouncing that right, dot org, which is a Catholic news site. It's in the lifestyle section. It's called, here's what Mark Wahlberg is doing for Lent. In case you all were wondering, because I know you were, it keeps you up at night. <laughs> Excessively. Right. It goes like this. Some inspiration from the actor, dad, and devout Catholic on bringing more meaning to the Lenten season. Standing in front of the St. Paul Church in Los Angeles, complete with an ashen cross on his forehead, Mark Wahlberg shared on his Instagram account his own intentions for his Lent, for this Lent. In the short video, he addressed that question many of you might be thinking right now, what to give up for Lent? I want to know what everyone gave up for Lent. The Hollywood star, however, wants to consider giving more instead of giving up. The busy dad shared how he's aiming to give more love, more peace, more acceptance, more caring, more kindness during the Lenten season. Not always easy for any of us in our hectic lives. He ends his message by like offering that. love to his Instagram followers and saying he'll see them at Easter. Mm. Wahlberg's post not only captures the spirit of Lent, it shows a celebrity who's not afraid to put his faith before his fame. Mm. Boom! It's, it's cute. I like. I like that. I like what. It, I like the. Um, I'm gonna follow what in. he could give instead of give up. I dig that a lot. Actually. And he, but cool. here's the thing, too, George. I think by yes. saying I'm giving more of this and giving more of that and giving more of that. Well, those are things. The things he mentioned: spending more time with your family, giving more kindness. <clears throat> those are actually giving up things as well. Because by giving more kindness, you're giving up being, being an bitter. asshole. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> by spending I... more time with your family, you're giving up time that you're spending on something else. Making money. Um, and in his right. case, a lot of money. Right. And yeah. I, I agree. And, uh, you know, there's multiple ways to communicate a message. And I just, I like the way he. Right. Like, right. He's still giving up something yeah. by giving more. Um, and I, and I, I dig that. Like, and I think absolutely. the way he said, like, and I'll see you guys. At Easter, I think I don't know if that means he's giving up social media. Sounds but like it. That's cool. In a world where like social media matters, your image matters to your livelihood in a position like you he's know, giving up. And so when people are like, can I say so, this? When his though, manager's like, why aren't you on social media? I, he gave I, up mean, I mean, speaking up for for what he's saying, I think people get so hung up on the part of Lent where it's, what do I give up? They forget that just as equivalent to that is the almsgiving side of it, where you are giving to the poor and to the homeless and to your family and to the, those people who can't afford to provide for themselves. That's equally as important as what you give up. And that's, what, that's the trouble is that everyone focuses on, what do I give up? They forget you're also supposed to give. So, what did you give up for lunch juice? Dessert. All desserts? All desserts. So pretty much just the meal after dinner you gave up. And lunch. That's kind of crazy. Kendra, what do you mean during lunch? Kendra told me you never ate dessert anyway. <laughs> yeah, wait. So you gave up something true. that wasn't even It's hard? not true. It's not true. So wait, the, what's the your kids... favorite dessert? <laughs> well, yeah, I ice, don't know. Ice cream and pie. <laughs> so, and it, so wait, I feel like as a dessert it has to be after the meal. So you can still have dessert and pie. No. You just can't have no, it. No, we can't have dessert and pie because I can't Dessert. So hey, what Siri, my, what's the definition of dessert? What my wife Where doesn't what my wife doesn't actually know because she falls asleep is that the kids and I all weekend long will will feast on things like ice cream and pie. Mm. And uh, even during the week when she falls asleep, we'll sneak off the kids and I and we'll have ice cream and pie. Nice. So or cookies, but usually ice cream and pie. And uh, so for the kids and I, we decided to do this together father and children because this is something that we usually do when mommy falls asleep <laughs> so so together we decided to do this you know as a family unit so yeah well i mean generally yeah. that's how like you pick your religion too is as a family unit you, you know your parents push you into it too so. not me um hey siri what's the definition of dessert <laughs> which word d e s <laughs> dessert means the sweet course eaten at the end of a meal See? It's only at the end of the meal, so you could still have nope. ice cream and pie <laughs> juice. You just said dessert. If it's in lieu of the meal, 
Then it's not dessert by if it's yes, ice. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You. What's if it is the meal? What if your what meal if is pie? Itself? What's if dinner is pie? An ice cream sandwich is still a sandwich. <laughs> 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 oh. Aaron, are you pulling a fast oh. one on us? <laughs> I know. So cheating. So just for the record, we're not cheating. <laughs> it sounds like you're cheating. Who else gave up anything for Lent? I'll give Juice a 30 <clears> second <throat> break. I gave up sweet stuff. So whether it's dessert or I'm actually eating what about a cookie this wheat beer? It's kind of sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> um, I also gave up social media. I've been reading this book oh. called Digital Minil- Min- Minimalism by Cal Newport, and it's like how this stuff is kind of just poisoning us and wasting all our time. And people mm-hmm. who give up social media, you know, you know, can become like musical virtuettos or like do other cool things. And I'm like, maybe I could do something cool. But, right, because that's a lot of time you're spending. I also gave up. Uh, I got off of Instagram and Facebook for Lent. I also can play a lot more video games when I don't go on Facebook. And <laughs> And I did not give up video games. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have your priorities straight. Do you evangelicals do Lent or no? Oh, no. Oh, absolutely, absolutely well, not. Well, hold on, hold on. Mike is. Mike told me he is doing Lent. Is he? Yeah. <clears throat> What's conservative, Mike? Gosh, can we call him? Can we phone him in? Got to FaceTime him. Someone give me... Oh my no, gosh. I know oh my it's gosh, his oh diet. Gosh, oh He's, I'm pretty sure he's given up meat. Yeah, I think it was. I think it's yes. unfair to call someone yeah, and big put them on a, against it. He said he's going... I think it'd be wrong to call someone and... They're in front of an audience. Yeah, you know it's only a little As wrong. Is, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's because you guys are actually polite. Like, hey, are you no, cool? I am not. <laughs> you're right. He's going vegan for Lent. You're Atheists right. don't that's have actually, that filter, man. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's not my role on this show is being polite, guys. <laughs> but but I, <laughs> to be honest, like, I think we're all a little atheists. Like, you're, you're fully Juice is atheist. Not. I'm Catholic. But, like... That doesn't mean I don't struggle with my faith all the time. Juice does not. Which I think to like be a, a person of faith like is to struggle. Do you struggle with parts of, of accepting the Bible and all the stories in it? All of it, yeah. Tell really? me more, Edward. All of it. But Thank like, you, Edward. So why yeah. do you choose to believe in it? What, what parts do you struggle about? Let's go for us. All of it. I mean, I, I struggle with like, God is is God there during during people's No, he is not. Or, oh my gosh. I could not agree with you more. That's such a great point. But no, no, no. That's not what <laughs> The world not is so young. Here. Like, why? <laughs> why? Why? why was God so here, prevalent like, in this small period of time, in this small portion of earth, and all this awful is, shit is happening everywhere else? And it's just like, oh, God, we're well, It's man. better to grapple with these questions and to just throw them out. Is it because, it, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, listen, I am all about. About finding to be God. Like, I am it's not a thing. all about finding God. I'm just saying he's not there in this book right here is what I'm saying. Mm. Then where else are, just making I mean, why, 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 right now. I'm gonna punch you're him all about fi- you're all about <laughs> finding out about him, but not in there. So wh- where else are you going to find him? Um, there's plenty of opportunities for spirituality. Um, oh, to like? Be Pray tell. Um, well, I don't, you know what? There's a tough one that I can't discuss right now, but I don't know. You know, I feel like in earth and in life and in nature, you know, I've felt some strong, like, spiritual elements that were stronger. No, that's good. That's good. That's valid. Yeah. And I would agree with you. But it's definitely, listen, yeah. what what I felt and what I prevailed to be, you know, something stronger or larger than life could not be any further than what is in this book. Here's, here's the problem. What you just described is also what... St. Francis of Assisi and Father Thomas Merton described. Which is... So, go ahead. Just call it Assisi. That's culturally showing, <laughs> Showing that God is everywhere, not just inside of a book. I know. Okay, so I, I feel you. And I'm actually... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with your rules for a second. Why... And I've mentioned this before. Why pick a team? Easy. Why pick a team, man? Just Easy. just find God yourself. Find that spiritual element that makes you a better person, more attached mm-hmm. with human beings, All more right. attached to the human race. Just find that. Why why pick a team? Why why oh, you're gonna say hate other people answer. are wrong? You're going to hate my why answer. Why say other people are you're wrong? You're going to hate my answer. I'm going to hate it so much. Go for it. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. The, so, guys, give him a chance. I'm actually going to stick up for him here. Wait, is that the one with Jar Jar? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Star Trek. Star Trek. Bye, Star guys. Trek. All right. Be the Star Wars fan. My favorite, my, favorite, <laughs> my favorite character on Star Trek was Spock. Wasn't he atheist? What did he say, though? He no. probably said something good. No. I bet Spock said something good. He believed. Good. I love Spock. In logic. Yes, he did. All right. All right. What does Spock say? Logic is what has led me to where I currently am. Oh. Okay. Wait, he doesn't say anything about who God is? 
well, it says highly illogical to <laughs> right. Ah, geez, but there's so, so much more information. There's wait, so many more wait, Bibles for you to wait, read. I, hold like, on. I didn't you finish. are so closely connected to this in, in uh, this Western culture uh-huh. and this Christianity country that you that funneled you to this. Now hold on. If you didn't have those filters or those connections or again that information at your fingertips, uh-huh. juice, I just don't buy it. As man. I anybody, feel like this is funneled. This is culture. As, this is life that we live in. As anybody who's in my PSR class will tell you, I am not very well connected to my Western roots in the country, and this is not a Western book. This is an Eastern book, and you can only understand this in its Eastern context. Jesus was Middle Eastern. He was. He wasn't an American. Yes and no. He was, no, uh, yes he was no. a white person, guys. Unless, I've seen his picture. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're talking about a Schofield Bible, then I think there's a lot well, of Western influence in it. I, 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 I have to I have to give Gumby that. I have to give Gumby that. Love it. Because <laughs> almost all denominationalism is based on Schofield. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do not like Schofield. But in context, and the, the scholars that I do follow are very contextual for the, the Semitic culture that it comes from. Um, you'll find that everything in here is very Eastern based. All the theology, the history, contextualization, the verbiage, all of it is very, very Eastern based. Are we going to ignore the fact that like we're a very Christian country? Are we just going to ignore? But that? we really aren't. Well, we are. Oh my gosh! We Shut really. Wait, you Shut said up. we are. You said we are. We're not. No. You said we are. No. We are. No. We are. We are not a Christian country. Oh, shut let's up. Let's get a third. We are a culturally gosh. Christian country. Thank That's you. A complicated, complicated I know this drives me nuts when Juice does these things. <laughs> no, wait, wait. We are. It drives we are. me friggin' bananas. Wait, wait. Culturally. <laughs> culturally. Okay. Culturally. Yes. According, according yeah. to the Supreme Court, what are we? Yeah. Also, English isn't isn't our actual language. According Jews, to but Supreme we're primarily Court, an English speaking according country. According to the Supreme Court. Actually, a lot of Trump supporters would tell you, speak English or get out. According to the Supreme Court, what is the national religion? I don't know. Humanism. So the okay. state. Is it? Yes. I when? believe that. Again, so Juice. The national English religion. isn't our national language, Juice. The national we are religion a is cultural. Humanism. Listen, I know. I could. Oh my gosh. Isn't humanism. This like... is, he's making some stupid argument. He's just, it's <laughs> pissing me off. It actually is. So bad. No, Juice, I know. It probably does, but it doesn't mean that's the truth. Just listen, I love how it said that. And again, it also says English isn't our language. We don't have a national language. We're an English country. I mean, We're an English speaking country. All right. But English is not our national language. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, we are a Christian country. That's cool. I'm actually surprised. With a something with a document that says, or with a dollar bill that says, "In God We Trust," and all the mm. other Christianity roots in that was added later, though, and everything you know. Um, gosh, I don't want to sound stupid right now, but uh, am I allowed to Google something right now? Sure. But again, it, no, we're we're a Christian country. I get it. Maybe that document said we're humanists, which I think is very cool, and that's very forward thinking of the um, people that made that. But that that's not the fact, Juice. And again, it's just a weird argument that you're making. So like you're not accepting the fact that just culturally we're generally a Christian country. I would say the majority of people in this country, I would argue, are religious, maybe, and they believe in, in a God. Right. So I would argue that we are a godly country, but a Christian country in terms of following the teachings specifically of Christ and following Christ's ways? No way. Question. When was In God We Trust added to currency? I have no idea. 1950-something. 1956. Nice. So it was much, much later. It so in our currency I've that is that a very, before. very late development. I mean, not until I mean, let's face it, a good portion of the population was alive in 1956, right? Right. So it that's when it was added. It's such a vague terminology, though. I mean, who's God? I don't. Di- God. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. <laughs> I know. But the fact is that we're primarily a Christian-oriented country, and Juice is trying to argue that right now. It just pisses me off. Like, Juice, we're a Christian country. That's why That's why How Middle Eastern hates here? us. We were talking about because that. Juice says we're weird shit, Wahlberg. and then he tries to make arguments. Yeah, we should be talking something, about Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, and we're not because Juice makes weird, <laughs> sh- crazy statements like that. He literally is going to try to argue that America is not a Christian nation at large. I would argue that largely we are not an. Oh my God, <laughs> Juice! I want to 
punch you in your Catholic face I, right now. I would have to agree <laughs> like, with that. What? <laughs> Only because. Gumby! I know. You're supposed to have my back at all times. <laughs> I do. What is going on? <laughs> Only because. Yeah. It... <laughs> Gumby! <laughs> Only because if you look specifically at what it means to be a follower of Christ and his teachings, we don't adhere to it. That's my point. Horseshit. Okay, if you, That's if I was point. a presidential candidate mm-hmm. and I <laughs> pledged my faith publicly to that of Jesus, M- Muhammad. Muhammad. All right. How many votes would I get that election, my friends? I would say it would probably be just. Lots. No, you wouldn't. Thirty one percent. You'd get. Yeah. You get. It'd be low. Right, it'd be low. Everyone, yeah, everyone that's pretty even good. those that are like Obama, everybody. Obama got a couple though, didn't he? He got a couple, right? But even he, even like, right? He's like, God bless America. <laughs> Listen, say that. Everyone, everyone got elected. <laughs> everyone is quick to uh, every president as uh, is quick to you know praise God and Jesus as their uh, as their faith. They play to the they play to their the uh, people who are going to gonna the, put him in office to the majority. Yeah. But All right, so we the, agree that yes, no, no, no. they play to the it, majority, but we're not going to say this is a Christian nation, even no. though that is the safest bet. There is no chance. If you say you believe in Buddha, not happening. Believe in anything else other than a Christian God, do you think you're going to be part of, you're going to be the president I, of the United States? Zero chance. 100% agree with you. All and right. you know why? I would argue because that. the shut up, 40, just shut up. 40 to 50 shut million up. plus, 40 right, to 50 ahead, million plus so called Christians that support Trump, I have a hard time with them accepting Christianity. Yeah. But he still says God and Jesus is his savior. Yeah, but that's just words. I mean, I, politicians just words. say I get, anything. I get where you're going with this, but I it's agree. still a Christianity is what he's saying. If it's God was like, praise Allah, <laughs> do you want to talk about a crazy country and a crazy political state? If Trump said praise Allah at his next convention, people would lose it. What if, people what if, would go crazy. And they really love it. That they, that plot twist. He wants to bring <laughs> Christmas back. He wants to bring Christmas back. He wants to end the war on Christmas. He wants to just shove it down everyone's throat that's not Christian. This is our Christmas. This is our Everyone's Christmas. Everyone's been talking about that forever, the war on but, Christmas. But we've talked about this before. His, his biggest... Um, Supporting base or um, evangelicals, seventy percent. I think like e- evangelical Christians, white evangelical Christians. Right. My my question to you is: What if instead of evangelical Christians, they were actually Muslim? Do you think he would? Do you think he would change his tune? If uh, the more voters were Muslim, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It, it, what are you talking about? That's my argument, guys. <laughs> what do you mean exactly? I'm saying we're predominantly a Christian nation. No, that's not predominant. No. Uh, yeah. What? No. no. What? No. Because the majority of people who are supporting him, um, you really have to question whether or not they're actually following. Well, well wait a minute, though. I agree. Wouldn't, wouldn't the Catholics say that Christian. if you're baptized, you're Christian? Not necessarily. That's necessarily. It has to be a Trinitarian baptism. Well, okay, Trinitarian is bad. Most baptisms are Trinitarian. The only okay. people who don't do the non Trinitarian. And it also does like, not mean that you're saved, right? Well, yes, I know that. But right. we, we don't, in, in Catholic faith, we don't make a judgment on whether somebody nope. is saved. Exactly. You, whether, whether they're practicing okay. or not. That's just yeah. one. So, That's okay. just one. I'm just saying my first Google but, says 73% of America is Christianity. That's just my first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to side with Gumby on this. What are you talking about? I'm saying more than half. More than half. But identifying oh. as a Christian doesn't make you a Christian. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying yeah. that. Oh, my gosh. Why, are we, why am I arguing the semantics? <laughs> if you say you're a Christian, you're a Christian. I don't care. Yeah, I, I think Because I'm a Christian so. and Thank I don't support you, Trump. Edward, <laughs> since I can't, That's back, I can't trust Gumby right now. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> but but just that statement, whether we're a Christian country or not, and and I I'm personally in the stance of like we take people at their face value if they say they're Christian, they're Christian, um, at least for statistical yes. purposes. Thank but you. But that no. doesn't uh, well, no. that, that not, doesn't even begin to unpack the complicated relationship our country has with Christianity the, and politics. The problem with that is is I work with sales, so I understand how this works. <laughs> it, it, the, yeah, and the problem is, is if Who I want to tell, sorry, if ahead. I want Christianity to be effective and actually uh, accomplish the goals that Christ set out for us, I would hope people wouldn't just believe me saying something, and that they would actually look at my life and how I live every day yes. to see whether or not I profess and I live the way what I profess. I, I feel like that's so. A- that's a big road to accomplish with seventy or forty, fifty plus million people looking at 
all their individual lives. I mean, saying something is one thing because, you know, if you grow up in a culture where everybody's Christian and your parents are Christian and all that, it's hard to break out of that. Because you would know and them I by their... Agree. Yeah, by their fruit. By their fruit. That's I right. mean, I feel like... Oh my gosh. I can't even believe I'm arguing this right now. <laughs> I agree I, with you. I mean, I, I agree uh, with We're that. a Christian nation. Again, 73% of the country says that they're... Um, by whatever poll that is. Again, I can look into others. I'm sure most are going to say over 50% of the country is Christianity-based. Yeah. I don't... I am not, I'm put, I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm saying, if you oh, say who you're said Christian, that? you're Christian. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, if you say you're Christian, I'm not going to argue how Christian you are. Yeah. Like, if you say you're Christian, you're Christian. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know I'm sure that. there's people in jail that have killed people. Does that make them less Christian than Jews? Yeah. I mean, so here's a weird thing. So this is a, this is a part of an article on the cutting room floor. Okay. But there was a study. Join my side. That Argue found I can't. Well, I can't decide if this supports you or this supports you. Just go for it. But Tony. it's interesting. There was a certain <laughs> percentage of people where if you like, like if you just ask them flat out, no strings attached, if they're Christian or if they're religious. I forget if it was, if it was Christian or religious. They would say yes. But if you told them first that a Republican speak at a church, spoke at a church, they would then say no. So what's interesting to think about is, so that person's changing if they're reporting, self-reporting on if they're a Christian or not, and if that person otherwise adheres to the teachings of Jesus, but they don't tell the person who told them that the Republican spoke at church, if they don't tell that person that they're a Christian, are they still a Christian? I'm saying they're Christian, because you know what? I feel like there's a lot of people who haven't studied the Bible, and if you were like, yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> what I'm uh, uh, A million examples. I'm just trying to think of something on top of my head. You're like, yeah, um, can you believe... Okay, someone who's not... Maybe someone that says they're Christian, All right. but they're not well... Um, they, they're not well studied in what is Christianity and what's the Bible, but they were raised that way. And I told them, yeah, this crazy guy in his religion believes that when they turned around, they turned into salt. Can you believe that? <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, that's stupid. All right? And I'm okay. like, well, that's Christianity. Well, they're still Christian. Wow. Like, just because they're ignorant to what, like, what real Christianity is, I feel like if they think they're Christian and they claim to be Christian, they're Christian. So, doesn't It doesn't mean they might not even play by all the values. Question for you. But if they say they're Christian, they're Christian. Question for you, then. Go for it. If Gumby told you he's a professional mixed martial arts fighter, would you take him as face value? There's a way to determine that, though. There's exactly. not a way. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. The only surefire way is with a fight uh -huh. right now. So there is a way to determine <laughs> Which this, Which I right? don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would go to mixedmartialarts.com, and I would see if he got I would see if he got paid to fight another individual. <laughs> and and listen, I've done I, I've had a long career. And that listen, there's people Christians. in West Virginia who's yeah. never trained before who could do an MMA fight. And they can get paid for it and thus yep. are professional. Yep. That person could suck at mixed martial arts. He is still a professional MMA fighter. He got paid to fight somebody. Success. Like whether right. they won or lost. So whether he's a good professional fighter or yep. a bad one. Yes, he's a fighter. But if he didn't pull up in any of the databases, would you call him out on it? Yes. And then if he showed me, I don't know. Yeah, we I'm sure have there's that ways. same criteria. No, you don't. Yes, we do. No, you don't, Juice. <laughs> It, it might pay. Listen, guys, I get. I was baptized. Wait, I was baptized, guys. I was baptized Catholic. Well, and I did my communion. And we know that you are not I'm a real Christian. Christian. I'm Christian. No, 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 no. I'm Christian, guys. <laughs> well, wait a minute. The guys, church would say he's Christian, actually. Boom! The church would say he's Christian. No. Thank you! He's a professor. Guys, atheist. I'm a Christian. Guys, I'm no, a Christian. No, no. This actually changed a few years ago where they said even if you write to the bishop and say you renounce the faith, that you didn't really renounce the faith. Oh. oh. I don't know. I don't know. No, my that. boy. No. my boy. No, I was looking no. this up with respect to marriages because you know there's always the, the law that that's different. That's legalese. Don't side with the Catholic. That's legalese. <laughs> I know it's legalese. <laughs> and, I'm not saying I agree me. with it, but I, I think it's that's, actually legalese that's in the Catholic law. Simply allowing no. something. <laughs> so that's legalese. <laughs> the birthplace of Christianity was not in America, nope. despite what all of us think. <laughs> it was, you know, Jesus was not born in California it was or, under or New York. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was Central America. It, it's 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 in the East, right? It's in the Middle East, yep. right? And there are a lot of Christ followers in the Middle East, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. 
who believe in Christ and, and live by what he taught us to live by, they don't look at evangelical Christians as followers of Christ. At all. There is a big schism there. There's a big difference in uh, the mindset of what being a follower of Christ is and a quote-unquote Christian. So <clears throat> it's truly a paradox here in the West. It really is. I'm just frustrated. In fact, it, wasn't it a certain imam that, and he's, by the way, Muslim, a certain imam who yeah. calls evangelicals so Santa Claus Christians? Yeah, McDonald's theology. That's funny. Yeah. Listen, I'm fine with that. Oh, my gosh. I'm just so angry. I don't even know what my point was anymore. That we're, spl- <laughs> that we're splitting hairs over what a true Christian is. I, I is would driving argue, me freaking bananas. I feel like this next article would kind of hit it. Like it. Uh, yeah, Should I, we just transition? I would argue that you know, the, try not to the claim that we're a religious or a godly nation. I mean, I would say religious. We're a political one. Yeah. but Which kind of guides us into uh, Gumpy's next article. Heck yeah. I better remember what it is. <laughs> So uh, this is on the U.S. church membership, and it speaks to the e, uh, congregation. Did Gumby pick this, or did you pick this for Gumby? All right, good. You can read it, because I can't turn Gumby it. was against me, so I'm just going to find something so, to pick apart on this. I'm just going to find a reason. <laughs> so, Whether I agree with it or not, it's According happening. to the article that Gumby pulled, I have not read this previously, so I am going to wing it. As Christian and Jewish Gumby Americans even prepare read. to celebrate <laughs> Easter and Passover, <laughs> respectively, Gallup finds the percentage of Americans who report belonging to a church, synagogue, or mosque at an all-time low, averaging 50% in 2018. It goes U.S. Back to the church membership was 70% or higher <laughs> from 1937 through 1976, falling modestly to an average of 78% in the 1970s through the 1990s. The past 20 years have seen an acceleration, the drop off with a 20% point decline. Pardon me, decline since 1999, and more than half the change occurring since the start of the current decade. Mm. The decline in church membership is consistent with larger society trends in declining church attendance and an increasing proportion of Americans with religious preference. No religion. This article compares church membership data for the 1998 to 2000 and 2016 to 2018 periods, using combined data from multiple years to facilitate subgroup analysis. On an average, 69% of U.S. adults were members of a church in 1998 to 2000, compared with 52% in 2018 or 2016 to 2018. The decline in church membership must mostly reflects the fact that fewer Americans in the past now have any religious affiliation. Mm-hmm. However, even in those who identify with a particular religion are less likely to belong to a church or other place of worship than in the past. I like that. Identify All with right. a particular religion. Mm-hmm. So that would be what I'm saying, is that most of America would identify as Christian. Whether you think so or not, or whether you feel like they practice or not, they identify as being Christian. Well, hold on. It, thus being a Christian this, nation. This poll is specifically on people who were previously affiliated as religious. Anyway, so go ahead. What's the, yeah, I guess I quit paying attention. Just what, what's the general <laughs> I heard I heard less I heard less people are attending a religion a yeah. church. As yeah. they should. Now mind you, this doesn't this doesn't specify those who align themselves as spiritual, which actually mm-hmm. tended to increase. I don't have that poll with me. I'm going to talk about that in a second here. Yeah, spiritual, (laughs) people who identify as spiritual increased as opposed to people who align themselves with religiosity. That's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't, but we'll get to that in a second because George didn't let me finish my previous thought process. Go. (laughs) Yeah, it's not in this article. The the rest of this article is more of this, essentially. But... So what what was your reason for choosing this article, Gumby? Oh, I just think it's interesting because... I think the majority of people I in our article, I want to argue with you, but I can't. In our country, are becoming less. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Less affiliated, affiliated, less enchanted with the idea of being religious. One thousand percent. I couldn't so, agree. More. But I think that's different. I've always thought that is different than spirituality. I would like to say that this kind of, this study actually aligns with my thought process. Of course it does. Because. Really, more people are Catholic than ever. I don't believe that those people, the, the, the drop off, mm-hmm. that large drop off, that was a 27% drop off. I don't believe that they were there because of, a, of an 
a religious affiliation at all. I yeah. believe they were there because of familial ties. True. So I really don't believe that you're seeing a religious drop off. I believe you're seeing people with who have family members who are dying off. And who are only going there because of those family members, which is a large percentage of of our, especially ethnic groups across the United States. I think there's factors, yeah, there's the, and that's definitely one with generational thing. I think the other factor too uh, might be something we touched on earlier is media. Yeah, you know, it, it talks about the last decade. I mean, if you think about the last decade of how far we've gone in terms of technology and media, yeah, uh, you know, like I said, we kind of hold God in our hands. Why do we need to believe in something outside of that? So this is an art, uh, a, the, an article that I um, I almost picked over, or you, but then I picked coronavirus. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of people who have been working for a long time to research to try to understand this, and um, there, what they found they found part of it is true that at least the best they can tell it's the familial thing. It's partially like. There was kind of a big a big drop off with the you know the sixties and kind of just the the rejection of of authority that went along with that and that mm-hmm. resulted in less people like less families going to religious services regularly and that kind of had like a multiplier factor where like you're less likely to be marrying a spouse that is also going to church that's also going to drag you into it but then there was a part of it they couldn't explain because they noticed a really drastic drop off around 1990 and. They didn't want to consider this possibility because it just seems so contrary. We always think like our religious beliefs inform our political beliefs and so on down the line. But they're actually starting to conclude that our political beliefs are causing us to reject religion. Like basically the the alignment with the Christ, Christianity and the religious right in the United States is causing liberal people to reject religion entirely. Oh, I like this. It so it, and, and, I like this article. I wish this. I want this to be my article. <laughs> <laughs> and one one interesting data point is, and you, you um, one of you mentioned it about that people weren't really necessarily saying they're any less spiritual. They actually like one survey, and, and these these have like a really like slow long burn. Like they ask people for fifty years about general opinions about belief in God or lack thereof. Like they ask like, do you believe in God? Do you maybe not know? Do you believe in God? And the belief in God remained constant over a period of time where participation in organized religion dropped off precipitously and it lined up with the emergence of the religious right. So people are people's religious views stayed constant while their, their well really their political and religious views kind of stayed constant but they rejected organized religion because they saw it was tied to something that was just anathema to what they felt personally they could believe in. Yeah, and the big question is that constant is a belief in a deity right well one of those constants of belief in deity it's like it's like it's also belief in the core tenets of christianity you know love of your neighbor and of your you know yeah. that kind of thing and they saw just this i, I think that's actually a part of it is a, is a healthy skepticism there's a there's a strong tradition actually in christianity of skepticism oh yeah towards false prophets and things like that that i think the emergence of this 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 tight coupling of politics and religions kind of rejected. We we just accept anybody now who says I'm Christian now, and now hold on. Yeah, go ahead. I have to stop you right there because that tradition you're speaking of is actually central around traditional Christianity. Because if we go parlay over to modern Christianity, they hardly question the validity of of professed miracles. Um, I mean, look at all those circles like your Benny Hinn. And your mm-hmm. Kenneth Copeland's, and your, they don't even question it. Oh yeah, miracle. I mean, they don't. Even, so, so on that side of it, they don't even question it. Um, it's 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 your it's your traditional branches like your Catholicism will just say no, we can't call it a miracle yet. Call the scientists, call the medical practitioners, have them check it, have them validate it, then we'll call it a miracle. I would wager this is why. Pro- I'm, so, I don't know the actual statistics, but I'm guessing that that Catholicism has a higher percentage of liberals still. Than a lot of um, evangelical, yeah, oh, which is what drew me in. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and actually I actually have to say too, kind of going back to what you know, because the question of like why do you pick a team, it's actually distinct from the question of why do you believe at all. Yeah. And the question, you know, the answer for me why I pick a team is because I saw this weirdness in this super Americanized Christianity, and I noticed that Catholicism was very much not centered at it was. It was centered in, you know, a the, you know, 
Eastern based traditional practices. And also, you know, B, when I think of someone like Pope Francis, I mean, who else is giving a crap about what's happening with people in the Amazon? There's anytime Pope Francis speaks, you can take all the rabble rousing about like, oh man, he's going yeah. against all this stuff. And then you can just realize, oh, wait, he's not talking to Americans. He's talking about like people in like China who are, are being oppressed by the the environmental issues that you know these giant factories are doing they're you know, pumping yes. smog into Beijing those kind of yes. things like it's very much international and it's very much not tied to a this understanding that's centralized in things like manifest destiny like it's kind of just rooted into like Americanism and that's why all those and I hate to say this but there's a large branch of of Catholics that think that really don't yes. like the Pope at all and they're very conservative but I think that he's been doing a huge job in helping all the other countries yeah he may not be there for america as much as they as as they want him to be but he he's been there for all the countries who are truly suffering through this and and he really has stepped up to show i mean right down to the time that they elected him and he sold his airplane tickets and rolled a road coach mm -hmm. i mean he really has stepped up to show that he's there Did for he sell him for a profit though <laughs> did he make a couple hundred bucks no. though like i mean no, i'm just saying no in fact to this day to this day instead of staying in the pope's quarters he stays in a servant's quarters so so he actually took a step down he doesn't even stay inside it's cute the... i don't really care but it's the, cute the pope's quarters is like 3500 square feet though <laughs> but again he stays he stays in the servant's quarters yeah so i mean it's cute so I guess I know, my sure. question is, he's like, I'm going to stay in the service quarters. No, hey, no, no, let me, PR agent, please no, tell everybody no, that, on, that I'm on. doing this. Let, yes. let me contrast that. Let me contrast that because <coughs> Kenneth Copeland has a multi-million dollar house and a six billion dollar airport not fair. on his property. Not fair. Is that the guy that does the not uh, fair. crazy religious things online that everyone makes fun of? Uh, uh, one of many. One of them. One of, them. <laughs> one of many. <laughs> but my po my question is. Do you have to be in the Catholic Church or any Protestant denomination to believe in God and no. believe in a higher being? No. And, yeah. and again, and I think that's, that's what I found. So all you have to really do is, is have again, a faith in God and Christianity, and then that would be it? This is, again, why I found this so refreshing. <laughs> because <laughs> So that's all you need. Right in right? Our, you don't have to go to church. You just have to say right, it. Because right in, our, in, the old, right in the Catechism itself, it states that if you are truly seeking the Creator— and, and you never so you could be an idiot as long as you're truly seeking the creator and you tell people you're a Christian, you're okay. Man, that opens up a whole other can well, of worms. You you Christian. There's a bunch of people. I hope there's a bunch of people who aren't Christian who would be in heaven. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a core belief of Catholicism. Yeah, I thought that is not a core belief of Catholicism. It is. It is. It is I thought that was um, gosh, the beers caught up with me. <laughs> um, I thought that was like number one. What's it called when you believe in other gods? Isn't that like one of the worst idolatry? Things? Pantheism. Right. Shut up, Gumby. Oh. Did you say adultery? That's the, that's the... Idolatry. <laughs> oh, idolatry. <laughs> I'm like, are you messing with me again, Gumby? I thought you were on my team. You need to change um, that A to I. No, 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 no. no, no. He's about to tackle uh, me there. Uh, I almost, I yeah, almost attacked. It's the first, <laughs> like, it's I the used... first commandment. I believe that you do have to believe in Jesus Christ to be in heaven. Yeah, that's man. not the first commandment, though. Lame. You don't know that God's before me. That's that's. Wait, distinct. what commandment is that? That you have to believe in Jesus Christ to be in heaven? What's that? There is I... no commandment. That's not. That's that's. A, Edward just said it. Not that's not Yahwist. Me. That's an Old Testament belief. That's I thought there was a sin to believe in other gods, though. I thought that was something bad. If, Help me out, guys. If if you re purposely reject God, if you purposely reject God. And go to another religion. It's common core thinking, man. <laughs> Keep up, man. For, any, Keep for up. anybody that's not watching on YouTube, I'm usually facing Juice. I'm facing Gumby right now. So I can fight him. I have to. <laughs> maybe that's funny. Maybe yeah. it's not. The core tenet um, is that you're only responsible for what you could possibly know. Yeah. Mm. And understand. In, in, yeah. Exactly. So I, I believe there's a parable in, in Luke something that talks about people like servants who didn't understand what they were doing and they were punished lightly, which sounds kind of like purgatory. And then there was servants who knew what they were doing and they were punished severely, which sounds like hell. Yes. Well, I hear what you're saying. Like if you grew up in Nowheresville and you didn't know about God, like you know about what you know about. Yeah. And okay. I think there's going to be like a moment when you die or whenever 
And God's going to be like, oh, you didn't know about me. I'm not going to fault you for that. You did know about this. You were pretty observant of that. Okay. So let's like, guess what? Here I am. So given that information, right? what's your choice? So let's expand the definition of no or not no. <laughs> you know? So like what if what if you grew up next to, you know, I'm, I don't want to single out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go there since we since a few of us are Catholics. But you grew up next to a Catholic church and you weren't a Catholic. And all you knew of the Catholics were the ones who walked outside with MAGA hats. And all you really knew of a broader Christianity was Donald Trump. Would you be responsible <laughs> for understanding the fullness of the faith when you got to the pearly gates? I don't understand this question because I don't feel like it's relevant. I hope not. Well, but I'm saying I would, what the, what the people who are doing these statistics are saying is like, it might actually, when we look at church attendance, it might be broadly relevant where a bunch of people are associating right wing politics mm -hmm. with church so tightly that they see them as one and the same. I agree with so that. So if there is ten percent of this country who sees that, are they respond did can we say that they understood the fullness of the faith, that they would be responsible for rejecting or accepting the faith? I agree with that. Yeah. Mm. I, I would believe a lot of the people who do identify as Christians here who do you know in evangelicals, but there is a political motivation behind it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which actually is a kind of a positive thing when you think about that kind of statistic is like, oh, you know, church attendance, religion isn't just dropping off because of some crazy unknown thing or personal decisions. That is the, the, the thing you have to fix potentially, or one of the things you have to fix, is actually quite simple. It's just like get the politics out of religion and a bunch of people might actually come back, which is really complicated, but it sounds much simpler than just like, but people I, like, are you know just what? ironically like people think they're crazy, but Jehovah Witnesses do that. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not allowed to vote or can. anything like that. Hmm. And it's because yeah, they're just they recognize that their religion and their beliefs are just far beyond anything oh, that's in, I, um, in touch with. There's a politics. weird appeal to that in this crazy world. I don't think point. you yeah. can divorce politics from a religion, though. Uh oh, I don't Boom. think you Head can. On, ready? <laughs> there we go. Oh. Point A, point B. Oh, you can like so. Christians say, or or certain Christians say, we believe in life. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's a political issue, right? Because you're saying we believe in this, we're anti-abortion. That's a political issue. Gay marriage. Or, right, gay marriage, that's a political issue. So these things are both religious issues and political issues you but can't divorce if, the what, two what if you refuse to participate in cuz politics is how you look at the way the world should or should not work and so okay. is religion i purposely i purposely most of the time refuse to vote okay because let's say let's take the last election for example in good conscience <clears throat> i could not vote for hillary but in good conscience, I also could not vote for Trump. So in order to ease my conscience, I didn't vote. Yeah. So I would say our religion should inform our politics. What we're seeing is something going way further than that, where we're seeing religious adherence under the guise of church actually picking up political, you know, planks of the platform, where it's now, it's be, it's gone from like, the church is pro-life, the church is, you know, pro, you know, being nice to immigrants to the, you know, church, you know, is maybe de facto pro-gun. Yeah. We're getting so, I mean, there's actually things I don't participate in anymore because I feel that pressure where it's like, you know, everybody around me kind of is in this monoculture that goes way beyond what our faith well, instructs. Exactly. And the, the platform itself forces you to back up, say, the bully. Yeah. And it's like, I, I hate the bully. I'm not pro-life unless I back isn't the that president. Your, isn't that your team? But no, that's just it. So like they, your team you is right. telling you to back you up. The, the, your team's my team's you to playing like this. crap right now. <laughs> <laughs> the problem right? is, is, yeah. is, is when that and That's why I don't like you. picking a team. Is that way, yeah. like, I don't like that people are pressuring you how to think or how to interpret, you know, these words or this Bible. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's weird. But... But I mean, how do you I, feel about that? I don't you know. know I, LeBron yeah. James played on a lot of crappy teams, and he still yeah. played like LeBron James. Yes, and he was still, you know, exactly. he, he couldn't have left the Cavs and been like, "I'm just going to be my own guy playing one on one." 
Like okay. he had to yeah. be on a team. It's exactly. A fair, it's a fair metaphor. Exactly. All right. Nice and, and 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 to parlay with that, uh, the Pope himself has actually rebuked Trump on multiple occasions. So where he has publicly called him out on his decision. So I mean, there's like the Christians don't, don't build walls kind of. I thing. don't know if if religion quote says unquote the guy who lives in a city. That surround a little tiny city that's surrounded by a wall. He should start taking the wall down around the Vatican and then talk. In his defense, he doesn't have the money for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we they might, can sell a couple paintings. It's not in the budget. And that'll be enough. It's not in the budget. <laughs> we we know the issue isn't the wall. The issue is really when you talk about things like how do you treat refugees. Exactly. So we could we could treat refugees as international standards tell us to, even if there was a fifty foot wall up. But we don't, you know, we don't, or at least the administration is trying not to. They're trying to say, no, you, you, you know, if you came here as a refugee, but you didn't cross an official crossing point, even if that's contrary to international law, you know, we're going to kick you out. I don't know if religion should drive politics as much as it does here. I'm not sure if any one religion should be that dominant, including right. Christianity, George. I don't think but that there it is, should. We're not, a, there is no dominant but, Christian. That's what Juice argued. But like. Edward is saying it's definitely not Christianity. We are well beyond that point where that even is in consideration anymore. It it does, and the majority of people who are quote unquote Christian Jews weren't or do me, weren't you just arguing for confess. Jews a little bit ago? That same <laughs> statement. I am I taking crazy pills right now? I don't know what's going on. I feel like I was arguing that Christianity was that United States is a, a Christian country. But I feel like you were just kind of, no, you kind of just said no. that it was right now. Because you know a Christian by their fruits. No, no. no this I, horse I, is dead. I'm arguing <laughs> religion. I don't think any one religion should drive politics. I really but it don't. does. I it, but it does. And it that does. religion is. We are, we, are beno- we are beyond that point. So it is, but that quote, religion unquote, is? Christianity oh, okay. we are. for the church. <laughs> but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call that true Christianity at all. No. Never. No, no. Never. No. Not to my grave. I would Well, that. gay is not marrying is. It says it right there in the book, whatever. That's so, Christian as hell. And again, we have to draw a distinction between what's religious and what is true spirituality. Because I don't, you know. Or what's yeah. political. I don't right. want to beat the dead horse, but I am curious in that argument how you avoid the no true Scotsman policy. The no what? The no true Scotsman. Like, <laughs> that, the idea of, like, this isn't a true Christian... Like, it seems like putting up a lot of rules might go beyond, like, like basically you could reduce it down to, I would never say anyone who doesn't agree with me isn't a true Christian, or is a true Christian. Yeah, it's, it is kind of weird I setting such strict question. guidelines. What's like, the question? So, so like, if, if, say, I'm arguing this person is a Christian, and then, or, or, or though certain people are Christians and certain people are not, and George says, well, this person who kills dogs says they're a Christian, so a Christian. And I would say, that's not a true Christian. Well, this person who eats meat on Fridays says he's a Christian, but he's not. And I say, well, no, he's not a true Christian either. Like, I could keep reducing it down. I could probably, and what I actually characterize a lot what happens in our faith communities is like, wow. we care, a lot of faith communities, or at least parts of them, will actually characterize, you know, if you're a Democrat, you're not a Christian. So it seems like in a, in a bubble, we can keep reducing it down and down and down in our own point of view to say that, None of these people are Christian. I, I wish I was smart. First of all, Keith that. is so smart. Yeah. I don't think anyone says if you're a Democrat. I was told this was an eight hundred dollar microphone. Be careful. So be, be careful. Able to take, pick up my <laughs> language from over here. We'd rather be um, safe than sorry. Though. Otherwise, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to save Gumby receipt. some uh, headache later when he's trying to edit this. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone has ever said if you're a Democrat, you're not. <laughs> A Christian. Yeah, but I like, think the I've argument. Never, I don't hear that. Right. Ever, there's pretty. Ever. There's been politicians who have said, "Oh, the you know the Democrats are a godless party." Yeah. There's They're there's like some abortion, rogue person who's godless. sticking yeah, I've heard it. their right wing literature into our churches. Uh, well, you guys thing are very, being very vague. <laughs> you guys are being very vague, and I'm noticing like a trend with this. But I feel like this, Juice and uh, Gumby were just doing that. I'm noticing no, a trend just, with this like, Bible over Bruce of being like super vague. And then anytime you're challenged on anything, let's move to the next thing. Let's be super vague. Let's move to the next thing. Oh, let's be super so vague. Let's move to the next thing. I disagree with We're you. Not I disagree like, at all. Uh, Edward, bring up your saying. favorite point, listen, and I will argue this for so, the rest of the night listen, right now. Edward. Bring it. Now, you're talking to the atheist 
and but, the protagonist, and we both disagree. I, <laughs> okay. I have got the no rules are to disagree. That's fine. And we literally You're welcome agree to right do now. that. I don't see anyone saying. If you're a Democrat, you're not a true Christian. If they are saying that, they shouldn't be saying that. There are some oh, things that are that. held with cert by certain political parties that, yeah, those things aren't that, in line with that, Catholicism. Keep in mind, that was just an On example. Sides. That was yeah. an example about describing no true Scotsman, yeah, where people yeah. can reduce, take something further and further. And some of the question I was just asking is, how do we avoid no true Scotsman while still having a pretty particular definition on who is a Christian and who yeah. is not. Yeah, I don't. For me, honestly, I, I part of me doesn't even care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't really and, care. And I'm going to back Keith in a uh, point, just from a, like a show perspective and point of view, like it's hard to split hairs. Like sometimes, again, you know, people are only going to listen to so long of a show, you know, so it's hard for us to be as intricate and as thorough as we want to be. So sometimes we make statements that are a little broader than normal. Like sometimes I just <laughs> roll with it. Like, and I think I mentioned it earlier, like, right, like, um, uh, and, you know, there were statements I made earlier, and then Juice was like, well, not everybody. I mean, yeah, there's some people. But, I mean, sometimes you just got to – for the sake of the show, I think we make sweeping statements. And I understand that you could poke holes in your argument. But and actually, it, in terms of what Christ taught, I don't think that can re- be reduced a whole lot. Uh-huh. There's not that many things he taught. Well, the salvation aspect, again, if you drop it down even into the catechism, it's pretty broad in what salvation can mm-hmm. be. So, so in- I mean – the interpretive, the interpretation part is pretty large. In terms of what just Jesus taught is doctrine, I think is separate than what the Protestant has is their own religions and their own man-made doctrines is different than what the Catholic Church teaches as traditions and doctrines, even though it may be based on that. There are things that are, are that are part of that religious affiliation that I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, I, I think Jesus try to say, hey, you, you know, you're in your traditions. It, it, he rebelled against that, you know? I, I think a way you could thread that needle is, you know, there's a, there's a one side where we say, well, anybody who says they're a Christian is a Christian, which for at least statistical purposes, I'm kind of a fan of. But then there's also like maybe something like, well, if you clearly are just using Christianity as a cultural trapping for your political hobby horse, that's definitely not Christianity. I, I think an I argument that says that... talk so much. I just seriously... <laughs> I don't know. This is the way you bring points, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Please call. I'm like, <laughs> I was just saying, I think if that there's a... someone who could turn me to Christianity, it's definitely <laughs> Keith. Like, he just brings some points and I'm like, why, bang, dude. Why, why, why would you turn anywhere because, else? Let's yeah. face it. A large part of American Christianity right. is cultural Christianity. Right. Mm. Yes. I agree. Yeah. I think that yeah. it's a way to thread that. It, I think that does avoid no true Scotsman, you know, even if just by a hair. What is that? What are you saying? Like, so, so there's, there's <laughs> when we talk about logical arguments, there's Say policies. the words slowly. So no can, true Scotsman. No true Scotsman. Yeah. So it's generated by the idea of like, it's a logical if somebody was arguing if someone is a Scotsman or not, they could bring up all these arguments and say, well, they don't wear a kilt. So they're not a Scotsman. These kind of things. So it's the same kind of thing with Christianity where we argue we could argue, well, this person doesn't, you know, they eat meat on Fridays or they adhere to the Levitical so, laws or all these other things so it, where we could argue. You, inter- yeah. you introduce Well, if arbitrary... anyone's doing that, like, I hope they so, enjoy their to define ulcer. It. Like, <laughs> like, what? To, to define Edward, what he's I saying. I feel like I was having that argument for Hold the on. first portion of this to, podcast right now. To, to, I, to define what he's saying. And like, then you made fun of me for bringing it back up. One life. true Scotsman is, is introducing arbitrary absolutes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and that's how you define your argument. I like that. Yeah. I mean, because we could even argue that Christ in his time was not a follower of God, right? According to the religious leaders at that time. They claimed that he did his miracles by demons. I mean, I'm, that's they deeper claim. than I know. So, so I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to bail on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so to claim that, uh, again, to claim that America is, is, is a Christian nation, I've never believed that. I agree. I agree. We'll, we'll hit the traditions thing later, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, even for Only basic... Only 73%. Even, are, even, yeah, but you know what? Even for basic reasons of this, Christ taught that violence was wrong, right? Can you at least agree with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah Does I everyone agree. agree with that? Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, when, when they came to arrest Christ in the garden and Peter drew a sword and cut off his ear, Christ condemned Peter. Yep. He did not tell Peter, no, Peter, actually go build an army, get a better plan, get more people, and we're going to invade, come back and invade and conquer this land. No, he condemned Peter for what he did, and he healed the man that Peter hurt. Yep. So, 
if you look at our country as a yeah, whole, it's a huge story, but I don't believe it. Go ahead. If if you uh, even if it's not real, take the truth from it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, I like the lesson from it. Okay, so even if you look at our country and how we operate in terms of war with other countries, would you call ourselves a Christian nation? I like that. I like I like that baby. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. I, <laughs> I I might need to be better with my argument and the way um, I portrayed that, but I like that. It argument, just goes back baby. to Jesus' argument. Yeah, it's it's about how we live. Cultural Christianity. Yeah. Go, okay. So could we have just like deleted like if I would have said cultural Christianity? <laughs> could we? <laughs> could we, <laughs> could we just? We just all agree. Totally, like, yeah, like right. 40 minutes of this podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, guys, I'm sorry. Did I, I, <laughs> what was, do oh, what's have, interesting, um, though, is if you don't accept, even for a moment, just for the sake of argument, that a Christian is whoever a Christian says he is, you can't collect statistics like that and you can't and analyze them like the way I was talking about that one exactly. argument. Exactly. And, and we would never, we would just be stuck at the beginning where we're like, what are the definitions? And it actually is important to make assumptions sometimes for the yeah. sake of seeing what trends are. And then at that point, when you see that drop-off, it's not a true drop-off because it's just the cultural Christians dropping off. Well, me. If we go back to the article I was talking about, those 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 people who might <laughs> well, be dropping yeah, we off because along, they detest the thing, know. <laughs> you know, the political thing, they might actually be more Christian than a lot of the Christians sticking around. Potentially, potentially. And I do see the argument, and I will say that it's a good argument. It is a very good argument. Hmm. It is. That would be that would call for the poll. That would definitely call for the poll. Yes, I feel like we won't really understand this stuff for at least another decade or two. Because Agreed. it just start in in terms of polling, you know, big people. This is people's lifetimes. Yeah, people's people's views. They, we found more. They don't actually change that much with how they age. It's actually more like they crystallize based on core events. You know, we have a whole generation growing up that I their their lives that. are going to crystallize around how they felt about Trumpism or how they felt about the recession. All these things, and we're not going to know how they really react for That's like thirty point. or forty more years. I don't yeah. think any of this is important. We we won't know until the, until the iPhone 15 Honestly, comes out. We won't know. <laughs> all these all these trends and how do so many percentage of people? I, who cares? Like worry about yourself and your family. And it, I don't mean to sound so like dismissive, but does this matter at no, all? I mean, I agree with you, but I also I'm trying to create a podcast right now. Of, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of depends. On, so, but no, with what you're saying, it kind of so. This kind of goes back to a conversation I had with my wife. Like she, she, oh she, oh she, she constantly asks oh why I keep like extending it? myself as far as I do. She said, you extend yourself too far. You extend yourself too far. You extend yourself too far. And I do. Mm. But I do that because I honestly believe that I am helping people in some fashion or some way. And those people have come back to me and said that I did help them. Plus so, you don't sleep. I don't sleep. So, <laughs> okay, Sam so, or Dean. No, so <laughs> so I, I do extend myself, and, and I may, who knows, I may even reduce my life because of it. But if I can help people in their life in that journey because of that, I really do believe I'm doing a better thing than just taking care of my family. So No, I hear you. You yeah. should, like, you should reach out and help other people. But, like... As far as me, like, worrying about the percentages of millennials, Generation X, baby boomers, traditionalists, like, mm, okay, that's not my, like, immediate I, circle, not to sound, like, selfish, or, like, I don't care about people in my immediate circle, or my, like, local community. Why do you hate but, humans? Like, <laughs> I don't. Says the I don't, atheist. but, like, to worry about, like, every single human... I, I agree. Oh, it's not relevant to how we live our individual life. Atheist bad. No, I, I think you're testing your faith. I mean, you didn't let me finish my my logical journey. That's what did you say about atheists? I'm sorry. Me and Jews had a little side convo, and okay. I'm trying to be polite at the same time and not be <laughs> dominating. But... Even, even though every time I bring up my logical journey, he cuts me off and goes back onto a tangent. Which logical journey did I cut off? Well, I started at at, at my my love of logic. Star Trek, Spock, and you. Yeah. Hey, we're right back on a tangent again. <laughs> well, okay, then. What if I let you finish? Even though we're, <laughs> even though we're, <laughs> the same thing you're yelling at me for. We're clearly doing Edward. Right 
I would love to hear more on how I cut you off on your logical journey, Juice. No, it's okay. We'll get it every time. No, go ahead, Edward. Go ahead. All right, let go Edward ahead. finish it. I'm just going to no, bring it back up. No, pretty much done. Like, All right, beautiful. This, yeah, you're welcome. I, I was going to say, I, I don't think it really matters in an individual level how we live our lives, you know, statistics like that. But, like, I... I would like to think Christian churches of all denominations should be concerned with marketing, and we're literally advertising eternal life, and we can't get anybody to buy it. And what the hell is going on? Because <laughs> it's fake. Well, it's because yeah. you're they dead. Don't you're have, dead. They're not using. You're exponent. dead. You are but dead. But the statistics would actually say that people don't believe that they still believe in God, but they're rejecting the church. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I, and I would so argue that's a, that's a relevant question. I'm going to throw out there. I'm just saying, and this is just me. I'm not. I'm not saying I read this anywhere. I'm. I'm saying, like, being someone who's also, like, <sighs> searched for spirituality or denied spirituality, someone that's very s- skeptic, huh? Huh? Um, it is nice to think there's something afterwards. Yep. It's a beautiful feeling. Right. Doesn't mean it's real, though, guys. Let's be but honest. Want, it's so, just like when you were born. George, Do you guys remember you when you were born? No, Before you were born? No, you don't. That's what it's like when you're dead. Doesn't matter. Done. But George, you're it's like... It's beautiful to think that I'm going to go to this place and see my grandmother and my uncle and uh-huh. my cousin. Uh-huh. And God, that's beautiful. It fucking feels... Sorry. Beep. Sorry. Beep. <laughs> that feels Mark, great. People have that feels great. death experiences would disagree. But it's that's not the truth. It's, so, it's not. I want to believe that. I want so, to, but okay, I don't. And I'm, and I'm not going to lie quote, to myself, so I, I feel better. I can't better. remember who said right. it. It was a saint. I helped my... Lord, help my, I want to believe, help my unbelief. That's you. Like, you want to believe. Everyone wants to believe. I'm grappling with things all the time. Because I'm like, God, why are you putting me through this or that or the other? Are you even in my life? Are you even there? So, yeah. Like, some days I would say, like, oh, I'm an atheist today. No, I'm a Catholic. For real. Like, come on. But isn't that like, most your saints, though? Right. So, so, like, you want to believe, right? Because you're you're attracted Listen, to that, that be, idea. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful idea. But again, yeah. logic and facts and thoughts, but like, it's my, just not bringing me there. I think it's but, a fantasy. It's a beautiful idea. It's so. It, Listen, that is beautiful, and I can see why people gravitate to it. I'm just saying, like, what I. But you can't just, say no. with certainty. Right. There's nothing. You I can't. hate that argument, though. I hate uh, that argument know, so much that you can't disprove it. Is it true? Is it true? Uh, but gosh, I hate that argument even more that you're doubling down on is it. Is it like, true? <laughs> like the fact that you're like, well, you can't disprove it, and I'm like, I hate that argument. You disprove it. And you're like, well, can you prove that? I'm like, gosh, I hate that so much. Like, can you say without you prove a doubt it? there's nothing <laughs> afterwards? Oh lord. And if you can't, oh, then why say that? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. But he's gonna go God. super saiyan. Now. So then, why choose to say there isn't? Oh, Edwards, Edwards, here argument comes the Hulk. Brings me into my argument. <sighs> All right, Jesus. All right. right. So, <laughs> love you, Edwards. Logical. You're such Thank a cool you, buddy. I love you. Logical. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> we have to agree that there has to be an exception of life. Correct. All right. We're all here. Yeah, I'll give you that. We're all here. Right. All right. So, <laughs> now, at the inception of life, what was causation? No one knows. Exactly. Okay. So, now, <laughs> wait. Hold on. I'm saying no I'm one knows. Not... You say, you're you saying it's here. No, hold on. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> so, there is there is causation. Not even, not even quantum physics can bring you to a conclusion of why that's there. There's hypothesis, right? But there's nothing that can say what was causation, what was inception. Yes. yes. Correct. All right. I. Okay. All right. Now, swing it. All we know <laughs> is where we came from as a species, right? And we know where we came from as a species, right? We can. We can some people we can, wouldn't agree, though. People we can would track, say we evolved. Some people say they don't. I don't care about them. So all right. <laughs> we can all right. track our evolutionary hypothesis, all right, from common astro- ancestry forward. Right? All right. So once we get to archaeology, which is different than paleontology, all right. Because you type. Thank you, because I was going <laughs> to. I was going to make a joke, but so, <laughs> go beat me to it. <laughs> archaeology is the study of man and man's history, and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So, so, so wise. We can, we can track archaeology and our progression from the start of archaeology. 
We can also track religious affiliations from that point. All right. And most people in those re- in those religious affiliations, including people like Aristotle, would agree that they were fictitious religious affiliations. Right? Aristotle completely agreed with that. But he also did agree. I like Aristotle. But there he also did agree there had to be a cognizant awareness that we would call God. All right? <laughs> now Yeah. And that's a commonality among all religions. If we go to Buddhism, it's the void. If we go to Taoism, it's the void, right? And there's there's nirvana. And then tell me what awakening. you were saying about quantum physics. So with a matter existing. Yes. So we know that for all matter to exist, there has to be consciousness. Okay, we know that because of quantum physics, double slit experiment, right? Ironic. What, what's matter, true about that is that the spiritual experience I had, it it was. Um, hold on, hold it on. It was. I'm just saying. All right. The spiritual experience I had um, was, um, what would be the word I'm looking for? Um, bled down all the way to just consciousness. We are all just consciousness, okay. which is interesting. Which is nice, right now. but there's no solid proof of this. And and I, I, I do appreciate your, your insight into that spirituality. However, when it comes to hard physicality, we know that all existence is dependent upon consciousness because matter cannot exist without consciousness according to the laws of physics. Right? Yep. All right. So you move forward. There's only one, only one pathway that archaeology, history, and theology has followed for thousands of years. It goes deeper in that, though, I would say. Go ahead. But mine has to do with at what's testable. Mine has to do with what's testable. I'm gonna Google something. So it has to do with philosophy again. And, uh, this so this is I, I see where you're going. Is but... A logical hypothesis across history, theology, and archaeology. Those have led me to where I am right now. Not arbitrary thought processes. Not potential hypothesis, and not potential. Theology, history, archaeology, and testable hypothesis have led me to where I am right now. I have led a logical journey to get where I am. Very little of it has actually been simply walking a quote-unquote spiritual path. Now, there is a spiritual path with that, but it's corroborated by history, archaeology, and testable hypothesis. And I hear you. Um, I have a counter argument, but I can't, um, especially recording. I can't at the point right now uh, bring it up. What I've learned, and I, I, right. I'm just saying. I no. if we were having a conversation, I could tell you what I learned, but I I don't have the stats and the names and the definitions and the uh, whatever to bring it up. But um, and I would, I'll, I will try my best. If it's unintelligent or not landing, then I will give it up. What I would argue is that there's a um a philosophy that all we know is what's in front of us mm-hmm. and very uh like right we all know the matrix right um so i'm just saying like we know what's in front of us uh we don't know what's behind the curtain mm-hmm. so there could be a lot more <clears throat> to this journey and it could be something you don't even know could be and i just feel like this is a story that we could grab and we can understand. There there could be a lot more to the story. Yes. But you close the door to that possibility when you say, I'm an atheist, there's nothing. I, uh, you know what, and I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you know what, Edward, let me, um, you weren't here for the early episodes. Oftentimes I, I refer to myself as an atheist. I'm, I'm really more so agnostic and I'm just feeling that we just don't know and that there is a... You know, there there could be something out there. I'm not going to deny that, um, but I just think it's so far beyond our understanding that we'll probably never know. Oh, yeah, that no, we agree uh, with that. But, <laughs> but see, you think you do know? And, no, no, no. Well, you this, think you do know? This is a basic guide. That's all it is. See, I think there's guide. something even like when I look at this, I look at there's you know what what you know what questions really get me. Let's say this is real. What's happening before God? Everyone's like, oh, what happened with God? Well, what what what? Whoa, whoa! It started with God. 
Yes. What 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 brought us to God? That that's probably a hell of a story if you ask me. But but like not enough people ask that question because they just they want the simplicity well, right here. No, because here's the pro- we well, have to expand past that because that's a very that's a very small thought. That's a very that's a very you very think so? small people thought. People live their lives by oh, this book. No, and you're no, telling no. me that's a small thought? Yeah, that's a tiny thought. Here's why. Oh, here's gosh, why. You, here's why. You are relating what is knowable, but what is knowable cannot be inception. What is inception, what is the actual existence, has to be much greater than what you know. Because if it was not birth, something greater, you would not know it. So it, it has just, to you sit... You just got decaprioed. It has to sit outside. <laughs> whatever you know, whatever you know cannot be existence. I wake up from a dream. Existence a dream. itself has to sit outside of what we know. So what, you, what you're saying came before... Is only because you know our current time, our current time space, what is testable, but whatever what birth or inception is beyond space time. So you can't compare saying, well, what came before? Because that's a very small thought process because now you're encasing that inside of what we know is time space. Uh, okay. I, guess, I, I see the argument. Yeah, <clears throat> I, guess, I guess I see the argument. Um, then maybe I'm a little ahead of myself. So if that's the case, though, can then other major religions, i.e. Re- whatever it is, could they have the possible truth to yeah. say Inception? They, all, I believe all religions have some truth. And I believe that every Catholic would agree with that. <laughs> so. So. Anywho. There we go. Like oh, gosh, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> Juice gets the last word. Edward. Myself yes. today. Any final thoughts? <clears throat> No. No. <laughs> hey, Keith, any final thoughts? When you mentioned paleontology, I thought we were going to start ragging on Ken Ham, but I'm kind of sad we're not now. We are <laughs> totally saving that for an entire episode. <laughs> for the record, mine, do... I will be back. My, my, story, <laughs> my story involved Ken Ham. It involved going... dinosaurs and it involved Ken I Ham. I was ready dinosaurs. to bring some heat. I was bringing the smoke. And Even bad though Jesus can't him too. <laughs> that could be my conversion we to atheism, agree. man. We, both, um, we actually both agree on this one. <laughs> Gumby, final thoughts. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen Inception by Leonardo DiCaprio, it's an awesome movie. It really oh, is. Yeah. And <laughs> there's nothing taboo over brew. It's been awesome. George? Awesome. Uh, I let everyone down today. Great oh. argument, Gumby. <laughs> Gumby brought it around. Good argument structure. Wasn't bringing my A game today. Good job, Houston. <laughs> Please check us out on all social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, you name it, we're on it. Please visit us on Patreon. Pay for our beer for the next episode. We'd really appreciate it. We will mention you on the episode. We are bringing out, by the way, we Pay are for bringing a nice out beer. a special newsletter that will have special video segments and tours and brewery episodes. That will only be available to our newsletter readers. That is coming up shortly. We already have the first one and that will be coming out here shortly. It's all put together. Um, so, again, or if you just want to donate it to us on anchor.fm forward slash Bible Over Brews, we appreciate that too. Have a great night. Peace. All right. Yeah.